Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Today I have a, uh, I guess, content that I never do. I never review this kind of thing, but this was just too cool, so I like felt like I needed to. That is the um, Mandalorian Dark Saber I found at Walmart, and it was just really cool, and I've not been so excited for a kid's like lightsaber toy since I was a kid playing with them. I've got a couple. It's not really something I dabble in. If I'm going to get like a lightsaber, it's usually going to be a collector version. Uh, but this dark saber was really cool. And so I did pick it up from Walmart. And so I'm like, I might as well do a review because it is so cool and unique. And I never really get a chance to review these kind of things because I don't pick them up ever. So uh, yeah, this retailed for $30. I found it at my Walmart and it's really cool. So uh, for those of you who don't know or don't watch any of the Star Wars TV shows, the, the Darksaber actually has a pretty defined history within the Star Wars universe, starting with the Clone Wars. It is a Mandalorian weapon um, made for uh, by, I guess, by the first Mandalorian who was inducted into the Jedi Order. So I guess that means that there had been more since. He made this really cool Darksaber, and then when he died, the Jedi kept it basically in their like archives. And then a Mandalorian clan... Uh, broke in and took it and I think it was for was it for House Wren was it or Vizsla I, I don't remember which house had the Mandalorian but uh, uh the, I'm sorry the Darksaber but whatever and then they stole it so we see it in the Clone Wars being used by Pre Vizsla um in several different occasions and then in Rebels uh we I think Sabine gets it and then she gives it to Bo-Katan I think is that how, how it goes and then obviously in the Mandalorian uh, we see it with uh, Moff Gideon at the very end of the show. Spoiler alert. Uh, but so, yeah, he's apparently got it from Bo-Katan. But it's a very important Mandalorian artifact. It's used to unite Mandalorians together because it's a respected weapon. And basically, it is a black lightsaber with the name of a dark cyber. So, enough of me rambling. This is it. I think it looks fantastic. You can see the Mandalorian right here, which looks really cool. Over here, you've got the Clone Wars with, like, Darth Maul and the lightsaber, and then you have Sabine Wren from Rebels. So it does include on the box the history of the Darksaber, which I think is so cool. I really, really like that um, aspect there. You can see Bo-Katan at the bottom. Um, it says, Ancient Mandalorian Lightsaber. And if I did not know anything about this, I would have picked that up on the words alone, because that is so cool. Ancient Mandalorian Lightsaber, you're like, what? Uh, but yes, so it's called a Darksaber. It's got effects. The batteries are included. It's got pretty nice packaging. It doesn't have any pictures of kids holding this lightsaber, so it can be considered an adult collectible if you if you want to judge it by that. Um, so maybe it's meant for multiple audiences since there's no child packaged on it. Um, and child isn't a human kid, not Baby Yoda. Uh, but the Mandalorian Darksaber here, and then it says swing for battle effects, which is cool. Gives another picture of the lightsaber if you couldn't see it, or the Darksaber, sorry. And then at the bottom, in this teeny tiny paragraph right here that you would almost pass over, it says, An ancient black-bladed lightsaber wielded by Death Watches pre Vizsla and later Darth Maul and later Moff Gideon for who knows how long. But uh, yeah, it does give that little bit of a bio at the corner, so I thought that was funny. But um, pretty much, it's I'm really excited about it. So you do have the effect to try it out in the box. It's on a demo mode, and I don't know how well this is going to light up, so I'm probably going to close the curtains, but we'll, we'll try it on demo mode first. <coughs> And then it shuts off. Um, so I'll take it out of the packaging and we'll get a close look at it and then I'll turn off the lights to show the light effects in more detail. Alright guys, here it is. Um, the packaging was pretty easy to remove. It was just cardboard and tape. There were no stupid twisty ties in it, so that's really nice. Um, overall, I think first impressions of just looking at it, it looks pretty nice. Of course, keep in mind this is a $30 toy and not a $200 collectible, so uh, judge it accordingly. I think it's really cool, even though I don't pick up the kid lightsabers very often or the blade builders. I've got a couple, uh, but yeah, definitely piqued my interest. Hopefully you can see it. It's, it's decently long. I mean, in terms of like, let me grab another lightsaber. In terms of the blade builder size, this is a blade builder lightsaber. Um, it is actually proper height, so small for an adult, but it is to scale. That still turns on. I think it's like 32 inches, so I think that's considered a short blade, but 
I mean, it's cool. Um, it looks really nice. Hopefully, you can see how it's how it's made, how the black effect works. Um, it's basically a white sword cut out with these little black panels on it to give it that dark effect. But this side is nice and clean. This side has some screw holes, which is fine. It's not a huge deal, uh, but. It's not the cleanest, I guess, in that way. Uh, the plastic looks good. The hilt um, is, is got detailing, but it's very angular, as was the Clone Wars way and then the Rebels way following. So it does have some detail, so, th so that's good. I do like the look of it. It is a very classic-looking sword where lightsabers are more like saviors or rapiers. Um, this one has like a classic like sharp-edged short sword look. Um, and then the hilt, of course, with this uh, guard in front, just looks very classic sword-like to me. So it is considered a lightsaber, but they call it a dark saber because it, well, it doesn't work in science, but it's basically like anti-light and then it reflects. I don't know. It's, it's kind of weird. It's very unique. Um, and yeah, so it says 2020 Hasbro on the side. It's got some warnings printed on here. Again, it's a kid's toy. Um, and then there is a piece of cardboard that kept it from moving outside of demo mode. So looks like there is an on and then an off. That's the on, never mind. So this circle at the bottom is the off and then we have the full on. So I'm going to turn off the lights to give you guys a look at its color effect because I think it's going to be really cool. Okay, so we have the lights turned off. I don't know how well you can see me because I never film in these lighting conditions. Uh, but here is the dark saber. We're just going to test its light effect. So not bad. It's not the brightest ever, but you can see there's a little bit of flashing going on. You can maybe see the light twitching a little bit. It looks really cool from far away. It definitely gives off a, a dark saber look. It occasionally has blue at the bottom. There is a clashing effect. That's fun. And it does twitch a little bit. I think there's even a waving effect. So that's nothing new. Lightsabers have had waving effects since they started making them electronic for the most part. There's also a lightning effect. You can see the blue on the tip and how it like tremors and it almost gets a little bit purple up here. I think that's because of the thicker plastic. I hope you can hear me by the way, past the sounds of this, but overall it looks really cool. You can see the blue again. Really cool. Another button clicks it off, and then there is a total off mode. But if you're playing with this, it seems really sturdy. I mean, the plastic that it's made of is really sturdy. It is not telescoping, so it should hold up better than a telescoping lightsaber. They didn't even try it. I do want to compare, since this Luke one works, in terms of brightness. This is a Blade Builder lightsaber that came out, like, back in 2015 or so. And uh, we can give it a try. So it's hardly got any color. The blade is pre-tinted. It's not super loud. But it does have clashing effects compared to the dark saber. I don't know if you could hear the swooshing, but <laughs> so pretty cool. So that's basically the gist of the Darksaber, guys. I hope that I was able to provide um, an ample review. I haven't ever really had experience reviewing these before, so I'm not sure how my lighting was. I'm not sure how much in the frame I can get. It's always wider than I think it is. Um, so hopefully this helps you make a decision on if you want to pick this up for you or maybe your kid. This, for me, was something that I wanted to pick up as an adult collector because it's so cool and there are so few Darksaber items out. That being said... With it now being a part of the Mandalorian TV show, uh, if it continues on to season two and becomes a big part, we will likely be getting a several different prop replicas of the Darksaber, so you could also hold out for that. But this is a cool little in-between, uh, little fun toy with light and sound that they've greatly improved on. I must say, in terms of Hasbro's lightsaber making, uh, or whoever makes these, I think it's Hasbro, uh, yeah, 
they've really improved on the way that they do these now, so I'm quite happy with it. I definitely recommend it if you want to pick it up. The price point's a little, I mean, I would have probably rather paid like $20 or $25 for it, but it is pretty hefty, to be honest. It's a lot of, a lot of toy, so really cool, guys. Awesome collectible. Um, it would be really cool to hang up just like that, just like you display a normal sword. It would look really cool. I might do that when I move in my new collection room, but we'll see. Anyways, let me know what you think about this dark saber in the comments below. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, I will see you guys later. Bye.